All right, Sean, you had asked me like a month or two ago, um, when wearing the white tie equivalent of Highland dress, we're talking really high formal, in other words, the lace cuffs and the jabot um, with something like a regulation doublet, should you wear a collared shirt or should you tie your jabot, he uses the word ask up, but jabot, um, under the collar? And Sean says he, he has this gear, he's just not quite sure what shirt to use with it. Uh, and the way you phrased the question originally, Sean, as I recall, was should you use a wing collar shirt or a turn down collar shirt? And the answer is, you want to guess? Yes. That's the answer. Okay, you're supposed to upstage my answers, remember? If you're going to do this. Seven. Seven. The answer is seven. Um, the answer is neither. Uh, Zing! Bam! No. Um, Kapowie. In real life, I'd recommend you're probably going to have better luck with a wing collar shirt. The uh, Basically, the short little triangle tuxedo shirt. Uh, traditionally, a jabot is actually worn with a collarless or banded collar shirt. Uh, and better quality jabots... Uh, there, there are basically different grades of jabots, and I'm not sure which one you have, but um, the more economical ones will have a Velcro tab at the, bo at the back. Uh, better ones will actually have, um, you know, laces. Uh, but traditionally, you would basically tie it on together like a cravat. And it was worn with a banded collar shirt, which was common in, you know, the 19th century. So a lot of, uh, not a lot, but several doublets you can buy, uh, especially like the Montrose, um, will sometimes have a button which is designed to actually tack the jabot onto. Um, or some jabots will work with, um, with collar studs, like you'll see on, on old-fashioned shirts. That's what I was envisioning was the little stud up yep, top. Yep. Yeah, sometimes it's a stud, sometimes there's a button <clears throat> sewn onto the doublet, apparently, as a secret button. Um, it really depends on how the jabot you have has been designed. It's definitely going to look better with a, a Kenmore or a Montrose, or a Sheriff Muir if you're using the very high-cut uh, waistcoat that comes with a Sheriff Muir. Uh, wearing a jabot with any other kind of a jacket, I'm not sure he's thinking this, but just in case anybody else is, don't try oh. to wear a jabot with a Prince Charlie or a, uh, an Argyle. It's going to look weird. Um, you're not supposed to see any shirt at all, essentially, is what it comes down to. You barely see any shirt cloth at all. It's just the, the fabric wrapping around your neck from the jabot. So occasionally you can get traditional banded collar shirts from a reenactment supply, house or um, there's a, a, a waiter shirt company in London, which I haven't looked at recently, I think it's called Dudley's, um, that uh, makes uh, traditional shirts for waitstaff in high-end restaurants. And that's a traditional shirt that would work with it. But essentially, all you should see is this band of white fabric, you know, it would be linen or silk, I think sometimes, uh, of the jabot itself. You wouldn't have any collar showing at all. So if you have to fudge it, go with the wingtip and just tuck those wingtips underneath or maybe even cut them off. I don't know. But that's how it, that's... You know, I mean, just because it's going to be... Hem them down. It's gonna be, yes. Yeah, hem yeah, them yeah. down, because it's going to be hidden underneath yeah. the jabot. Or can you just tuck it behind the jabot? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, or flip them up and in. But, but, but an actual, yeah. a true 19th century banded, banded collar shirt, shirt would yeah. actually be the best. Okay. So, Very good. I try to keep my promises. <laughs>